up, you guys? Welcome to Thrive Online. Uh, I'm so stoked for you to be here tonight. Can you imagine, like, it's been 10 months since COVID started. Like, the new year is less than 80 days away. Less than 80 days away. It's, it's, it's crazy how time just flies by when you're having fun or quarantine forever. I don't know. You choose. Uh, but, guys, welcome to our service today. We're going to prepare for worship. But before we prepare for worship, I want to know... What is your favorite Among Us color? When you play Among Us, I know you do. When you play Among Us, what is the color of your choice? Uh, mine's white. Isaac over here said his is black. We always get voted out first. You tell me, what's your favorite color in Among Us as we prepare our hearts for worship? Here I am, down on my knees. Surrendering all, surrendering all. So find me here, Lord, as you draw me near. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. So I. Surrender 
Worship, it's, it's a blessing from God to us. But did you know that, that worshiping God is actually a blessing onto the Lord himself as well? And it says, when we worship, we actually bless the Lord. And I don't know if you guys like, but if you've ever worshipped and you actually just put the meaning behind every word. If you watch this again on YouTube later on, or if you, or you, know, if you find yourself worshiping, if you just put the meaning behind every single word, it will dramatically change the way that, that your life is after that. It will change your mindset. It will change the way you think. It will change the way you act. It will change everything about you. Because what you're doing is you're fulfilling that hole in your heart that's just pleasing the Lord. And only God can fill that hole. But I'm so happy you guys are here today. Uh, today we're actually going to be continuing our series of Nehemiah. If you guys have been following along, right now what's been happening is the wall's built... It's already built, and so now the focus of this book is turning from the wall, and it's actually going on to how the people are when it comes to their relationship with Christ. And actually, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at Zephaniah, uh, if you just have your Bibles, but it's in Zephaniah 3.17. And I want you just to really hear and process what this is saying um, from the prophet Zephaniah, but it says this, I'll read it, you can listen. It says this, it says, The Lord your God is with you. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. See, that, that's a powerful word right there. Everything that God will do and wants to do for you. But yet sometimes in life, I don't know if you feel the same way that I feel, but sometimes in life it just you feel like you're not worth that. Or you feel like maybe God's words for you right now isn't the truth. It says right here, it says, the Lord your God is with you, but God, how can you be with me after all that I've done? God, how could you, how could you be on my team knowing what I'm thinking right now? But the Bible says that he is with you. He wants you to win. He wants to be on your team. He is fighting for you. And that's what the Bible says. The second line, it says, he is mighty to save. Guys, that, that he would put his son on the cross for you. He would put his son on the cross to save you so you would have a chance in this world to show you how it's done, to live that sinless life, to, to be able to show us God. It's, you know, maybe, it's, maybe it's hard, maybe it's impossible sometimes, but God is for you, then who could be against you? He is mighty to save. It says he would take great delight in you. I, sometimes in my life, I just feel like I'm not good enough. You know, I'm not a good enough speaker. I'm not a good enough barista. I'm not a good enough husband. I'm not a good enough brother, a good enough son. I'm just, there's better people in the world than me. And that's true. There are better people in the world than me. But I just feel like, God, God, how can you delight in me? Out of all people in the world, why would you choose to delight in me? You know, maybe some of you guys are feeling that right now, but I want to reassure you, Zephaniah 3, 17, he will take great delight in you. He, he will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Guys, God, God is for us. The Bible has shown that over and over again that God is for you. And if God is for you, then what can go against you? We all know the saying, but sometimes it's hard to apply that to our hearts. And maybe some of you guys are struggling with something right now. And what we're going to do 
in this moment is we're going to move into our Zoom small group time. And I really want, I want to dive into that question. And we have two questions or one question tonight. And it's, it's what's so hard for us to understand when it comes to applying this scripture to the way that God feels about us. You know, we, we take it out of context sometimes. We say, you know, God's mad at me because I messed up. God's upset at me because I did the wrong thing. Or the, the Lord isn't talking to me because I, I, I did these really unruly things. And I just, I feel like I don't have that connection. I have this disconnect with Christ right now. And I don't know if he can be for me right now. But why is it so hard for us to listen to what God says about us? So we're going to break into small groups right now. That Zoom link is in the chat for you guys. I really want to talk to you guys about it. And then we're going to close with each other praying for each other. So that's right. You're going to talk. You're going to look to your neighbor. You're going to pray for them tonight. All right. I love you guys. And we'll see you again next week.